drop in like that. These are probably the most expensive plugs I've ever put in a car. To line up perfectly with that center mark. What's up everyone, today we're going to be working on the GSR Integra. So one of the things that have been neglected on this car since I bought it and put it together is the ignition system, and mostly like the distributor. Reason being is I took it apart to try to put a new cap and rotor on it, because this one's cap, capped, cracked, the cap is cracked, and I pulled it apart, all the insides are, you know, it's worn out, there's carbon everywhere, could not get the rotor off, it is seized on there, I sprayed it, let it soak for hours, could not get it off. So. Instead of taking it off, letting it sit, and not having my daily driver, I went ahead and got a, another uh, distributor from my boy Hunter. So shout out to Hunter, he's always hooking me up with stuff. But sent me this, hopefully this will just work for now, and I can rebuild that one so I have a spare. We're also going to be putting new spark plugs in because I'm pretty sure these are just like standard plugs are not the iridium ones that you're supposed to be running in here because i didn't want to waste money on them if the engine didn't start because if you watch the video or the video series of the rescue and revival of this car dude these plugs that were in it were seized so bad and they're rusty this is terrible i don't like this at all well at least it doesn't have aluminum threads on it like terrible so i was like i don't even know if this car is going to start up like it was so bad but we got these to put in, iridium or whatever these, these are the fancy one, good ones. So we'll throw those in while we're at it and then take it for a drive, see if it makes any improvement on the butt dyno. It should, and I should get better fuel mileage now. I've only been averaging about like 24, 25 miles a gallon in this car. And that's because, mostly because uh, the short gear is in 85 mile an hour on the interstate. So it's just high RPM, it's burning a lot more fuel, but I think I can get a little bit more, hopefully around 30 with the new plugs and wires. I actually just got like 29 miles of the gallon the other day, and I don't know if that was just a fluke, but yeah, I, I want to try to get this thing around 30 miles a gallon because 24, 25 miles a gallon with premium fuel is just not fun. I really think that 29 miles a gallon that I got the other day is due to all the construction, so I'm driving like 45, 55 for a lot of like several miles instead of 85. So that's probably why I got the 29, but we'll see if we can push up those numbers and I guess we'll see how this goes. So before we put the new distributor on, I'm gonna check the cap and rotor, make sure they're actually tight because I don't really trust the manufacturers. At least these screws are tight. Yep, that's all tight. So I'll put it back together and throw it on the car. I also can't tell, I'll have to look at the stamps better to see if this is a reman one or a new one. Hopefully it's a reman one because I've had so many issues with the brand new ones with like the coil or something. I don't know what it is, but they break up at high RPM, which is a common thing with Honda. So if you're having a breakup issue with your Honda, even if it's a stock one or built, um, yeah, try to source out a OEM distributor. Even Rock Auto, you can buy um, the rebuilt ones, or whatever you call them, remanufactured ones. Those are like 100 times better than these brand new ones. I've just chased so many weird misfire problems, and it's usually just high RPM, like breakup. It's not really a misfire, it's more of like a breaking up. And every single time, I want to say, I want to say at least 90% of the time, it's because there's a Chinese distributor on the car that was a brand new distributor or whatever it just wasn't oem and had the issue with my car so many of my friends cars and it's just one of the biggest things to look for if you're having a weird breaking up issue and my civic being one of them it's just a stock b16 with bolt-ons but when i first put it together actually from hmo i had a chinese distributor on it which is kind of frustrating and i was having a breakup issue doing my plugs i replaced the plugs like twice put new uh wires on it you know swapped a bunch of things out and sure enough, I looked at the thing and it was a Chinese one. And then I went and got a remanufactured one from Rock Auto, which is this one, which unfortunately had a cracked casting, but I just didn't care because I was just so frustrated and done with it being <laughs> breaking up. But put this on there, timed it, and it drives 100% now. Anyways, just figured I'd throw that quick tip in there because 
I've tried. I've helped so many people with that same issue where it just breaks up and it's just weird. And it's always been a Chinese distributor. I already unhooked this yesterday because I wanted to make sure it was the same plug. There's like three different plugs, I believe, for Integra's. They had like a double one or something. I don't know. Integra's are weird, but yeah. So we'll get this bolted on. And I just realized it still has a Honda cap on it. I highly doubt it's the original cap because this thing has over 200,000 miles on it, but that'd be funny. Also, before you do this, you should probably unhook the battery, but your boy just sending it because I don't feel like retuning my sub and sound system, so I have it unplugged, so that's all that matters, right? Yeah, it's just three bolts that hold this thing on. If you didn't know, I just pulled the bottom one out. There's that one right there and one on the back side. Oh, another thing that I forgot to mention with the Chinese distributors is they're usually like all the way um, like cocked one way, the distributor. Like it's to get it in time, you have to have it extremely forward or extremely back. It's such a nightmare. I don't know why they're like that, but yeah, 10 out of 10. Just find an OEM one or a remanufactured one. Can't stress that enough. And your firing order is 1, 3, 4, 2. So 1, 3, 4, 2. But I'm just going to do it the easy way and pop this off and then just pop the plugs right over the new one so I don't have to finagle with it. Oh, still got a good seal on there, I guess. And just make sure that surface is all clean and make sure that no dirt fell in here before you put this one back on. Also, make sure that flat marking there on the key is facing the same way as the one that you took off. So mine was facing toward the front of the car, so I'm putting this one on with it facing toward the front of the car. And make sure your keyway is aligned with the camshaft. Just gotta twist it a little bit, then it'll drop in like that, and you're good to go. Got all the bolts back in. I'm gonna leave it loose, because I still have to time it. I've actually borrowed a timing light from a local shop that I'm gonna use, and I'll show you how to do that as well. But first we'll throw the new plugs in. Well, that's kind of annoying. These uh, studs were backing out or whatever with the acorn nuts. So I think they were just seized down there. So I got to tighten these back down quick. Oh man, already oiled down in here. This valve cover gasket that I got. I can't remember what brand it is, but it's absolute junk. It's already leaking after like a year, year and a half. Just sprayed some carb cleaner down in there and dried it out with a rag, so it should be good. It wasn't misfiring or breaking up before. I was just driving this thing yesterday, so. They're not even like the iridium tip. They're just trash, so <laughs> I've been running on this for like 10,000 miles it's probably not good but it hasn't had any issues and it's always good to check your plugs across the board when you pull them out because they'll tell you a lot about how the car is running and these look surprisingly good for being the wrong plugs in this car <laughs> but I mean, they're, they're just like the cheapest ones I could buy they were still NGK and this is the perfect color you want them you want them a tan color so surprisingly look better than I thought we we're putting the new plugs in. Always make sure that the electrode isn't bent, as if it got dropped or something. They usually have this little sleeve in there to prevent that, but always check them over. Just make sure the gap looks the same across all of them, because you can't gap these types of plugs, because you'll ruin the coating on the electrode and whatever. So, can't remember which one's called which, but you know what I mean. Just make sure it's not crushed. These are probably the most expensive plugs I've ever put in a car, but they have like a double point on them. The standard like iridium ones just have a pointed tip coming out of the spark plug not on this. So fancy. So someone might not agree with me on this. I don't care what your grandpa tells you. I went to school for this. Um, always, You always want to put anti-seize on your plugs and when you do divide the torque spec in half. So these are I believe 14 foot pounds for the plugs. So when you put anti-seize on them it acts as a lubricant when you're putting them in the head. So you want to put, put them in at 7 foot pounds. And it's always worked for me. Your plugs come right out. But yeah, this will save you from snapping a spark plug in your head when you go to remove them. So yeah, and don't 
go to the torque spec with this on there with the anti-seize because you can break this in half because you're essentially torquing it to like 28 foot pounds when you're doing it that way so anyways math science just a little dab like that i'm not coating the whole thing in it or anything crazy just So this will be the biggest pain in the butt part of this job. Uh, the timing mark way down there, you're going to have to mark that with something bright colored usually and then find the timing mark on the, uh, the harmonic balancer. So that one right there will be on the timing cover, that little triangle thing. And then i got to spin the crank around so we can get the other one. And to turn the crank, assuming you still have the bottom skid plate stuff or whatever like I do. All you do is take a 19 mil and jam it through that hole and it'll lead you to the, uh, the crank bolt. You don't really have to turn it if you can get to the bottom side of the harmonic balancer and just mark it there, but I can't because I have all these covers. So, so I'm going to try to explain this the best I can because it's going to be near impossible to do while I'm trying to actually time the car. Actually, I forgot I have a motor over here. All right, this works out perfect. So this is that mark I was showing you earlier on the timing cover. This is just a like a pointer. And whenever you have the timing light going, whenever it flashes, you want this to line up perfectly with that center mark of the three. And then, so that's like 16 degrees timing or something. I can't remember. I think it's 16. But essentially you want this to be flashing with that center line and that's how you get your perfect timing but before you do that you have to do something under the dash so under the dash you'll have this little clip here it rarely you'll actually have the the other end of it but you never do and you don't need it anyway this little plug right here you want to jump this with like a paper clip or whatever and this will set the ignition timing to like a, the default or whatever so the computer isn't fighting the ignition timing while you're trying to set the timing so yeah, just gotta jump this quick and then we'll start uh, timing this baby. I forgot to mention, the only reason I was talking about the paint marker thing is I usually just mark that middle one and mark this so it's easier to see with the timing light. Sometimes you can see them, but it just makes it a bunch easier if you can just mark these with a bright colored paint marker. And if you're wondering how to mark it down there, tape it to an extension. Makes your life a lot easier. I'm an idiot. I accidentally put this cover back on. I forgot I need to put the clamp on the wire. So I gotta pull that back off quick. Also, I've never used this type of timing light. It has this extra green one for like the coil wire, but obviously this doesn't have one. It's for like older trucks, so hopefully it works normal without that. But I guess we'll find out. It should, but I've never used one this fancy. I always had like the old Craftsman one from whoever that store was back in the day. You want this little clamp as close to the plug as possible. So get it on there and scoot it all the way forward. And that, this is your cylinder one. So it'll flash the light anytime this is fired. And that's how you get your math, science stuff going on over here. <laughs> anyway, I don't, I'm so tired right now. But anyways, yeah. So anytime this flashes, you want it to line up with that center mark on the um, balancer. And yeah, I'm explaining it all now because I don't know how loud and noisy it's going to be. But then we'll hook this up to the battery and go from there. And this one's digital. It's fancier than what I usually use. So I just got to make sure that's set on zero because obviously you can advance and retard timing for other purposes. But yeah, we're just going to stick to zero because this is a stock car. <laughs> Alright, it was kind of hard to see with the camera, especially with flashing lights and stuff, but it's timed. What I like to do is, after I tighten the distributor up, I tighten the top bolt, because it's the easiest one to access while you're doing that. So I tighten it up, check the timing, make sure it's all tight, and then once I get all three tightened, then check the timing again. That way you know you didn't move anything, and that way you're checked all the boxes or whatever, I don't know. Double, triple check, that's what I like to do. All right, everything checked out, and then the last thing I like to do is mark the distributor. So if you have a punch or a screwdriver, you can use a marker too, but 
they might come off, but mark it where it is, where it's in time, that way you know if it moved or something, or if you have to take the distributor off for some reason, uh, you can just put it back on and it'll be in time. Yeah, also, I bought this for my car because I figured it deserves it. Yep. So now i got to find where, somewhere to put this thing. Mm, I don't know. No, no, kind of a weird spot. I was going to put it up here, but the Montana heat just bakes everything off. And with the black, I figured it might come off. So, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Maybe there. Maybe I should put it here. I don't know. Whatever. All right, let's go for a little test drive. And don't forget to remove your little paper clip. Alright guys, so successful install and successful drive. So if you did like the video, I appreciate a like. It helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the builds and the projects or if you like this content. And 
follow me on Instagram, Kanjo underscore brothers, if you want to see more on there, sneak peeks, and all sorts of other fun stuff. Also, if you're looking to save money on everything from dash cams to LED lights, go to my links below uh, in the description. Use my discount code, save you some money. Or if you want to buy Conjo Brothers stickers, hit me up on Instagram. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.